Okay guys, it's me again, and I've got a follow-up to the RTL SDR software, uh, or not software, but uh, RTL SDR uh, USB device, and uh, I was going to show you show you how to download and all this and that, but uh, I don't have the right antenna for it still. I uh, still need to build that. Um, I did find a link to where you can buy one if you don't want to build one. Uh, that's going to be about $200. Uh, to build one, it's going to be probably half that, maybe a little, little more than half. Uh, so I haven't gathered the materials for it yet. Uh, there's a few different antennas you can build. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, whichever one seems to be the, uh, the quickest and best uh, antenna to build. I, I know it, probably know which one's the best to build, but uh, let's see if it's we can find one that's a little cheaper to build. So <laughs> we'll try to strike that balance. Um, probably, you know, like I said before, I don't want the right antenna. Uh, another issue is I haven't bought in a bad spot. Uh, it's not very high. It's right beside my my house. As my house is a little siding, and you know, not all that uh, not great of a spot for the antenna. But uh, I have it out there just to see if I can get anything. Um, we'll go ahead, and I'm not going to show you how to uh, download all the software or how to set it all up. But I will do because basically all I did is I went to this website here. Uh, the rtl-sdr.com uh, went here to featured articles tutorials and second link down is the NOAA weather satellites so if you click that you get to this site and you know, it walks you through pretty much everything step by step now you have to download some plugins and a few other pieces of software. Uh, of course you need the, the dongle, you need SDR Sharp or some other one, but they're using SDR Sharp in this example, so probably best to use that. Uh, an audio piping method, which they describe down here. Uh, they give you links to it. Uh, now, what they mean by audio piping method, move that out of the way. Right here, you've got the SDR software. This is what plays the if you, if you had a radio station, it played a radio station through your speaker. Well, the weather to image software needs to be able to pull that audio over to itself. So in order to do that, you need to somehow get the audio to it. And the couple ways of doing it is listed here, the Windows Stereo Max, which you don't have to download anything. You just have to configure the settings inside of uh, Windows to, to enable that. Or the route I took is I installed the uh, virtual audio cable. And that's pretty simple to do. Again, there's websites for that <laughs> directly linked. Uh, so you can do that. It's fairly simple to do. And notes here, you, Again, they walk through this. You, know, you just read through the, the the site. They describe what you have to set the settings to, and uh, but I'll, I'll bring it up real quick so you can see it. So right there's the stereo mix that I'm not using. So I'll go ahead and disable that. But if you use it, uh, let me let me show you how to get to it real quick. Uh, if you're going to use your stereo max, it's not enabled by default. So to get it inside of Windows, just right click, show disabled devices, and right there's the stereo max. Right click on that, choose enable, and there you go. But I'm not using it. I'm using the video output. So with this, uh, the trick is to get it to work with WX image software also is uh, I found out to use it as the default device if it's not set as default. So let me, oh, let's set microphone to default device. Default communications. Hopefully that's, no, my audio is still fine. All right. So, so set, this is the default device. Just right click set as default device or you got the button down here to you can select that and choose choose select as def or select default 
So now we'll click on it again, choose properties. And you can adjust the, some uh, volume settings in here, which I just leave at 100. Now for the default format, it's default, it's set when you first set it up to CD quality, the 44,100. You bump that down or bump that up a notch to 48,000 or DVD quality, that's the one you want. So there's a little trick on that. And of course they describe that here. And here they're talking about the types of antennas, which I still need to build one. And uh, also here they give you the little description of uh, setting up the software, what frequencies the, each uh, satellite is on, what you sort of expect to see once you have uh, the right antenna which I was not seeing that because I don't have the right antenna, but I saw part of it. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, give you some images of what everything should look like. Uh, also, here's where they're telling you how to set up weather to image. And let me go back here. Uh, click happy. A um, little note here also, uh, when you're setting up your location with latitude and longitude, which you can look up, or you know, you just Google it. And, you know, what is my, what are the GPS uh, coordinates for in whatever city you're in? Um, I would probably put in the uh, altitude in meters. Again, you just Google that. It's like uh, altitude for whatever city in meters, and it should give you that. And basically, here you're just setting it up. However, there. Uh, recommending again, they use the cable output, the, the virtual uh, audio cable, and also they tell you have to update your Kepler files, which is the files that tells it tells the software where the satellites are, and basically you just follow through step by step on here. And here they're talking about uh, setting up the volume, so when you're recording it gets right about 50 or better and <laughs> hope you didn't hear that uh, from my brother but we'll see uh, what you don't need but is very handy is the Orbitron software uh, show you back here as you can tell this is the Orbitron software it uh, it shows you where the satellites are and also helpful a little bit. It will set the frequency and the Doppler frequency to control SDR sharp. There's instructions, instructions on the website to tell you how to set all that up. And tell you what uh, what track uh, what plugins you need. So it's, it's right here. Download and install Orbitron. Download the SDR Sharp Orbitron DE tracking schedule plugin. It gives you that. Uh, you know, tells you each step what you need to do. Um, side note on this also, I found for whatever reason uh, on this step here, where it, as you go out to update all the. Uh, of the TLE. Let me stop doing that. All right. Um, it wouldn't update it. They continually want to update. I couldn't figure out why initially, but I found that for whatever reason, let me get into the files here, that all the files or this folder for whatever reason was read only which it's back to and let me look here and all the files were read only uh, it doesn't really matter too much if the folder is read only but it does if it's the files so what i had to do is i had to come in here select all the files which i did it's like i just let me show you again just click on one do control a that selects all right click go to properties then it was checked and read only i just unchecked the read only clicked okay 
and that fixed that. So once I did that, it was able to update all these uh, all these files. And as you can see, modified today. That's been a while, <laughs> but all of them have been updated. Uh, 529, which is the date I'm recording this video. So that's a little trip up that I came across there. Um, let me go through um, this. If, when I first read it, wasn't too. Uh, it was a little confusing because it made it sound like when you're modifying this uh, the setup config that you just go to this section and add this line. No, no. What you have to do is you actually have to add the section in to that config file. And what that does is tell Obertron what driver to to use. So you have all these options in here before. SDR Sharp wasn't an option, but now it is. So we click that. It now connects to uh, SDR Sharp. So let me show you. Let me uncheck that, and we'll select NOAA 15 and see how that changed. Let me do that again. Let's check 19, and it changed it in SDR Sharp. This was a completely different piece of software than Orbitron. So there's a tie-in between the two. And if you watch the received Doppler, and uh, this frequency here, the downlink, that will these these two will change at the same time. And if you look, the azimuth and elevation match, they change at the same time. So all the information from Orbitron is getting ported over to uh, SDR Sharp. So once uh, once the scheduler is enabled, <laughs> which is another bit, which is in the instructions. Um, the scheduler basically tells uh, SDR Sharp when to start recording or when to run the config for that particular satellite, which you set in here. So which one I've selected? 19. So 19, we set all this information in, which they give you a download link to give you the basic uh, setup for that. Which, let me look through the software. Anyway, it, if nothing else, it's pretty easy to copy from the website, and you're just doing it the same step over and over again for each uh, satellite. And to do that, you just do add new satellite, come here, you give it a name, and you just copy over whatever you want there. But we already have that information here. Um, let's go back to 19. I've modified it a little bit. Um, I can probably take out this radio center frequency because I did that because uh, I couldn't uh, it's not that I couldn't but uh, I just want to make sure this radio frequency was set correctly when it first started up but I don't need to do that because that's actually controlled by Orbitron and uh, let me show you real quick on Orbitron I'll set that because uh, let me switch it to 18 kept coming up with the wrong frequency inside of Orbitron, so I'd have to manually set that. I was like, well, there's got to be a way to set that. And there is. So you go into the Set Orbit Info tab down here at the bottom of the screen. And over here at the beacon and the downlink frequency is where you can set those. Uh, I think Actually, I think you just set the D-link, the download link frequency, I believe. Uh, or it might be also the beacon frequency. I don't know. I'm gotta gotta wait for one of these satellites to to swing around just to be sure. Uh, still playing around the software, but that's where you set those at, and that's where where I'll set it here, and then it'll set it inside of SDR Sharp. So that's pretty cool. But as the satellite comes around, uh, Orbitron will see that it's coming around, and when it sees that it's touching or it's close enough to your location where you can actually see the satellite it'll kick off this configuration script for the satellite. So I'll pick 18 here. So it'll set the modulation type to wideband FM. I'll set the bandwidth. And it'll say the track the frequency. And again, we can remove this one. We don't need that. And then it'll tell the radio to start. So that's basically telling it to click the play button up here. Then once it's out of sight, 
it'll tell it to stop tracking the frequency. So it'll stop changing the uh, the Doppler frequency, and it'll turn, then tell the radio to stop. So it'll stop, uh, like you're clicking the stop button, which is comes in handy because <laughs> that little bugger gets hot. So having it turn on and off uh, by itself is uh, very handy there. <laughs> And uh, I'm not kidding, that, that, that RTL-SDR gets really warm. Um, I, won't, I won't say it's hot enough to burn you, but it's, it gets pretty close. Uh, I was kind of surprised by how, how hot that gets. So I got a little, little fan running on it, a little USB powered fan that I picked up at like Home Depot for a couple bucks. I've had it for a while, so I you know, set it up to cool that thing off. And it, once you get a fan on it, it, it cools down really really quick and you know have like a minute or two on a fan and you can touch it and it feels you know feels cool or whatever but uh, if you don't have a fan on it that gets really hot but it's an this one's an aluminum case so as soon as you get some sort of airflow over it it, it cools down immediately but till then <laughs> um, again we'll, we'll, we'll just move on to uh, actually get this out of the way all right, so we'll move on to, to this here. Um, this talks about setting up the scheduler. Um, you can set what elevation you want the scheduler to kick on off or kick on at. So um, if we look, I have mine set at eight degrees. Uh, I can probably bump that up a few more degrees because the, the, the antenna I've got doesn't really receive very well. So there's really no point of starting to record something that you can't hear anyway. So um, you, that's sort of whatever uh, whatever is, be is best for your antenna, for your location, whatever, that's something you need to determine on your own. And uh, we'll you know, see when, when, once it's actually connected, yeah, I'll actually see it there too. It'll show you all that information and, and all that. So I think that's all the little, uh, little bugs and little step by step on on that again almost everything's on the website um, but to show you what it looks like because I don't have an antenna with or a, not antenna but a satellite to really show you and because I don't have the right antenna won't be able to pick up anything and you know I'm not gonna wait around for this uh, I found a uh, somebody who uh, save the recording for from their pass and I've got it set up through audacity right here to play on the uh, virtualized audio cable so we can uh, actually see what what it's doing here and let me sort of expand the screen uh, let's clear that out all right so let's do record and I'm going to say manual test and we're going to go ahead and start playing the uh, the audio file here and as you can see it's starting to fill up along the bottom of the screen and we'll give it a minute here it looks like a bunch of static at the moment but you can just start seeing that it's starting to fill out some images here And tell you what, we'll, we'll go ahead and let this play on through. It's going to take it a few minutes. Uh, I might speed this up and, and post, but uh, as you can tell, it, it goes pretty slow. It's a little one line at a time, real slow. Tick tock, tick tock. But uh, we'll go ahead and go ahead and uh, let this roll through. We'll speed it up here and show you what it looks like at the end.
All right, guys. So there's the uh, the image. It took about since I speed that up, you really can't tell how long it took, but uh, uh, it's about 15 minutes to download that entire image. So it would, that looks like it's already stopped. So that's the image you get. Uh, you get uh, positive and negative there, and there's all these enhancements you can do to it, and uh, you can magnify an area, resize it, you, know, you can do all these little things inside the uh, weathered image app itself. Uh, I haven't played around too much with it, but we'll go ahead and uh, try the false color here. Let's try that, see what that looks like. It takes it a minute to process. And there it is. And for whatever reason, it wants to rotate the image around. So let's uh, flip it back. And right there's a pseudo color <laughs> image of it. Let's come back here, let's take that off. And oh, well, let me take it off. Let's do C service temp and see what that does. Image and flip. All right, and let's do thermal. Let's look at that. And of course, it flips it again. There's thermal, and you've noticed. We now just have the one one image of the two side by side. It combines both those images. Now let's just look at vegetation there. So here it splits it again. Oh, okay, we don't have that in there. All right, so again we have to flip the image. What is with that? <laughs> but definitely a lot easier than uh, how I did in high school <laughs> where, where we had to manually sign each layer a different color at least this does, uh, does some of that on its own let's look at this one. Oh, that one looks nice sort of <laughs> this this gives you all the cloud layers so you can definitely see the, the clouds in there you can barely see Italy. You probably see it better uh, than I can, I guess. Let's try this one. There we go. You get both the, uh, you can see the, the land, the sea, and the clouds nice and clearly with that one, so. But anyway, there's the uh, what the application can do there, and what it looks like, and about how long it takes. Like I said it takes about 15 minutes to go uh, from uh, receiving the image to, uh, to well, it takes about 15 minutes to receive the entire image. So yeah, it does take a, quite a bit to to download, but uh, it's not too awful bad. So I guess uh, from here, uh, my next video will be uh, how to set up or how to build an antenna and maybe giving you links to the uh, uh, one, I only found one manufacturer that makes it, but uh, the, the link to the manufacturer that makes the antenna that you would use for this particular task. Um, so we'll go ahead and put an end to this one and I guess we'll see you next time around.